paper magic will survive like the heat death of the universe and will... <laughs> oh, it's a smuggler's copter. Would you like to crew this? And then it crashes because they don't understand arithmetic. All your cards belong to me. Two minutes into Mason him in the eyeballs, I switched to pepper spray. He's like, yeah, it's downright refreshing. And went back to the race. Magic is dying. I'm done. He's selling everything. <laughs> I might be a hoarder. And yes. I don't have the crayons or glue to explain this to you right now. <laughs> Were you going to die twice? Oil Just... would be worthless before magic cards would. Well, okay, Dr. Man. That's Mr. <laughs> Dr. Professor Jason. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Race Number I'm your host, Cast. I'm my head host, DJ and Jason. On this episode, it's a very special episode. We're going to talk about Modern Horizons 3 and maybe some drama. I don't know if there's drama this week. And also, we're going to do pick, uh, Breaking Bulk Pick of the Week. Maybe a little psycho in between. Uh, that's all for this week, folks. I'll see you next time on Brainstorm Brewery. The funniest part of that bit is that JJ listens to this at 2x speed while editing. <laughs> So I've been listening to, this is a bit for the pot. This can actually just be our cold open. That was the cold open. That this was terrible. Other I blew open. out a big mouthful of pot smoke the second you started talking. So I've been watching the aspiring Spike PowerPoint YouTube videos where he makes like a PowerPoint presentation about cards in Modern Horizons 3 to kind of help me like orient myself on which cards I think are good and which cards I don't. It, it helps you spin a cube in your mind, you would say. Exactly. But I watch it at 2x speed, but also I need more stimuli, so I also play Nightcore in my other headphones, so it's literally 2x <laughs> speed aspiring spike, Nightcore. Oh, you said Nightcore. I thought you meant the 1980s television program Nightcourt. <laughs> no, Nightcore, like uh, 2x speed pop songs. Anime girls. Um, yeah, oh, because the night girls. the Nightcourt theme song actually kind of slaps. So. I'm going to try that now. Um... I forget where I was going with this. Uh, oh, so that it'll autoplay things, right? It'll autoplay from, like, Aspiring Spike video to another video, and it'll keep the 2x speed, and so it'll go to be playing Nightcore at 2x speed, and that's what I imagine I sounded like to JJ there. <laughs> Amazing. Check the Discord. <laughs> well, okay, then. Do, it's do you been just an episode. some Nightcore at Nightcore? <laughs> what? <laughs> So I'm not the first. <laughs> Fucking absolute banger. The second video on that drop down just has an anime girl pasted over the, the courthouse. <laughs> Enough about DJ being a weird pervert. <laughs> Good. <sighs> There's a lot of uh, a lot of fuss in the magic scene right now. Uh, Modern Horizons 3 is on the horizon. And I believe we have the full spoiler now. We're very close to it. And there are a lot of cool cards in it. Anything jumping out to either of you? I know well, there was a Commander Deck spoil today for you, Jason. I didn't want to cut you off there, but if you want to hear about uh, whatever we were talking about prior to this, please go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash BSB. Subscribe to the $20 a month level, the Mythic tier, and you will hear all of the crazy stuff we talk about that does not make the cut for this episode. Unless you, you don't want to hear that. You have asked us to do live shows dozens and hundreds of times we are not doing that for reasons that are described by our lawyer in a little angry tweet dm but we can go to the after hours we've all anyway. received death threats anyway mh3 modern horizon i've never received 3, a death threat related to this podcast though oh that's true there's so many more least. fun things to death threat you about it's that's true way, it's way down on the list and you know what you can death threat me about if you really want to how much I love the card Birthing Ritual. It's a bad birthing pot, or maybe it's a good uh, uh, Court of Calling. I don't know. Birthing Two Ritual is is to birthing pod what a doula is to a doctor. <laughs> okay. So I mean, they're it's... different cards. It being two mana is really strong. The fact you don't have to invest any further mana into it after that is also really strong. You're paying mana for birthing pod? You have to pay you one, pay and, one. A, and a green yeah. Phyrexian. There's a little bit of an investment there every turn. Um, the card is like is, fundamentally very different, but I think it's strong. Is seven cards enough? Yeah, I think so. So you don't get to do toolbox stuff with it. That's like the biggest difference, right? I think I think if if Birthing Pod looked at the top seven and did that or whatever, like this card would be meaningfully better, obviously. But I think you just can't do toolbox stuff as easily. You still can if you want to play like Court of Calling in your deck. But I think the actual card that goes with this really well is Fiend Artisan. Because it lets you do the toolbox thing. And this I thing's really good at letting you, you get to you get to look at your top seven, put a fiend artisan to play Saka Mana Dork. Okay. And all of a sudden you have the ability to find your one Malira to combo off with. 
and you're using it as a way just every turn you get incremental value while you're also assembling a combo, which was always what was good about Birthing Pod was that you were getting this, this Kitchen Fink, Scavney Township, Ranger of Eos value. And eventually they were in a situation where they had to interact with your fair plan and you kind of got to sneak in a combo with Court of Calling. Yeah, and that, this, that was this my fighting, favorite modern deck. Right, and this does the same thing, except you just, like, it requires the card Fiend Artisan to be a part of it. Like, I think the formula of, like, 22 lands, 4 Birthing Ritual, 4 Court of Calling, 30 creatures is like a deck, somehow. Wow. So, it, I'm, I'm digesting this card for the first time, not reading it for the first time. This does let you find creatures below X. So, you're not, like, it's not like, oh, if you have a 4, you have to find a 5. Yep. You can go five or less. You can navigate a little bit with that. Um, right. Are there dumb things you can do with this with things that convert or cheat mana value? So, like, is, th is there, like, a Gurmog Angler into a Traxa vibe we can get here? Almost certainly. That's not what I'm looking to do with it, but I do think that that's, like, probably fine. Um, the thing about this card, though, is the more your deck is reliant on it, the worse I think it is. Um, if it's just, like, a part of another value engine, I think that's that's way better. Because artifacts and enchantments in modern are just so fragile in the face of Force of Vigor and Besaju. Right, and you don't um, want to whiff on this. Whiffing is the worst. You, you, right. you want to find something. I think if you're trying to Gurmag Angler into a Trax, you're better off just Neoforming into Gristlebrand or something. Sure. Um, that all said, I'm sure there's people who are going to try it with Birthing Ritual, and maybe it'll be better than I think. But I'm really, like, I'm looking at all of the Birthing Pod-style creatures, like the Orzov Pontiffs of the world as things to maybe pick up if I'm trying to play with it. God, Orzhov Pontiff is just That's such a, a filthy card. I love yeah. that magic card so much. And to whoever designed the mechanic haunt, I assume they are died of old age now. Um, but I just want to give them a little shout out because I mean that's it's been 20 years. They they haven't gotten any recognition for that mechanic. Everybody hated it. Nobody knew how it worked. But to to that person out there who designed that piece of beautiful magic history just chef's kiss to them yeah did you see that they gave us a blue prosh no why, why would they give us a blue prosh GOT moag ancient when there's a battlefield you make a 1-1 one, one green forest dryad land creature token for each time you've cast your commander birthing okay. pod shenanigans Although, having red was probably better than having blue for Prosh. Was it a food chain card, you mean? Or Yeah. Yeah. The card's probably yeah. fucked up with food chain, yeah. I like it. But, it, like, it's it's going to be harder to kill him. You're just going to, like, get a bunch of generic value and... I don't know. I... It, just, it seems, oh, like, no. way easier. I... It... I get to make generic value my favorite thing. No, if I... I'm going to around with Prosh for five minutes, it better kill the table. And, and Impact sure. Tremors makes the table die. I want the table to die. I don't want to draw 40 cards and I pass. Mean, you can just play all through the brood. That kills them, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. You get, you just throw something in there. But I love I love food chaining Atraxa in CEDH, so like I'm just a sicko. I, I have multiple food you, chain decks in EDH. Jason, yeah. that I don't know why they made this card. Like, I or don't Omo. Understand. Like, all these Simic commanders... Just don't, you don't need to put every Simic commander is Tatiova. I rest my case. Ovo is really cool, though. Oh, I, I love the design of Ovo. Yeah. Like, I, that card's really, really cool. You got it. I'm, I'm a total um, homosexual. I'm definitely building this deck. I feel like if you play an Omo deck, though, you have to, like, go on Etsy and get, like, little ceramic everything bagels to use as your everything counters. That'd be really cute. So, sesame seeds? And poppy oh, seeds, Omo puts everything. everything counters on things. You get little everything bagels to put on your like land. That no, I get really it, but, but I just I I don't like the name of the everything bagel. Okay, like why? <laughs> it's nothing you want. It looks like a bagel they dropped on the floor. I mean, I, I, I am an <laughs> right. Enjoyer, right? Not Doesn't it look like they dropped it? And they're like, oh, it's got everything on it. Dude, that it was only most... on the floor for five seconds. What can get on it in five seconds? Oh, uh, I don't know. How about everything? I th I was gonna say that is a very New York, uh, and then you pulled into the accident. So yes, we we got there. It's a bagel. Of course, it's New York. It's the special water that makes the bagels taste good. We're it's New York guys, of course, we eat bagels and pizza. <laughs> we're New York guys, of course, we're walking here. 
to all of our New York listeners, I'm very sorry for my transgressions, and I will. I'm do very sorry that you pay as thirty five hundred dollars a I'll... month to live in the corner of a closet. As somebody from New York, I allow it and say it's wholeheartedly okay. You're not that, from New uh, York. As someone who's from New good. York, I call no, it bagel. I I agree that they should chop it off like Bugs Bunny with Florida. I'm not saying that they shouldn't do that, but like I'm endorsing your stereotyping because it you're the Florida reason. of New York, DJ. Syracuse no, is the Florida no. of New York. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. New York is a beautiful, wonderful place. New York City, incredible stuff. Upstate New York doesn't seem like a nice place because, like, the only people I know other than DJ who talk about upstate New York are, like, people I know who went to West Point and they're like, yeah, our uniforms are gray and the sky was gray and it was gray outside and uh, uh, three students committed suicide every semester. To be fair to upstate New York, the two people I know from there are DJ and Reed Duke. And those are pretty cool people as far as I know. Other cards I'm looking at in Modern Horizons 3, uh, Warren Soul Trader, notably with blood artist uh with with that plus grave crawler or forsaken minor you can infinite loop kill everybody man i love winter be something i love winter moon which is kind of up because like it's actually super good for green more than most colors which it's is kind card. of f-ed up yeah, but like Winter Moon being like, oh, you have to play a land that taps for multiple mana to catch up to me, playing three basics every turn. Well, eat space. I mean, green's I, the worst color in Commander, isn't it? Clearly. Am I wrong? Like, so it's, maybe, isn't it's like the, the best CEDH deck just every color but green? Isn't like Blue Farm like that? Like, isn't isn't that the most powerful? EDH thing? isn't like, CEDH. Right, but like. We're talking like the power of cards. Uh, the ubiquity of cards impacts the price. Power can lead to ubiquity, but only ubiquity but I, but like can I'm saying, lead to price increases. This card being a green card is a good thing because it will see playing green. Does that make sense? Like it's like designed oh, to be played against yeah, yeah, people I want guess. to play. Oh, you're saying to like hose the the green decks? And, yeah, okay, I could see that. No, or I'm like saying this, like this helps out a bad color in CDH. Right, like, I can't tell like if you think this is a good thing existing. Can I'll I'll stop talking. I'll let you explain, Jesus. I'm saying I think this card being something that goes in green decks means that at high levels it will help green decks, and at lower levels people who play green decks will be excited to have it. So like it's ubiquitous in casual commander. Oh yeah, green, and this card will be good there, and it's also potentially good in competitive commander because maybe it'll make like a weird like a Zeus deck good or something. Maybe or maybe just like a blue green deck good. As opposed to everyone playing four color suit piles all the time, which guilty. But then anything with an everything counter on it doesn't untap. Oh no, my bagels. Maybe you put this in your Ovo deck. Can you put everything counters on your opponent's lands? Yeah, it's one target land, not one one target land, one target creature, not that you control. So if you start bageling their lands and freeze them <laughs> down with the moon, that's really kind of stupid. That's kind of sick, actually. It's, I think it's also cool that there's cards in the main Modern Horizon set that go with the commander decks. Like, that's neat. I'm, I'm very glad that it only took us, like, 15 minutes of this podcast to get to bageling as a verb. I mean, it's a good verb. It is a very good verb. I would even say it goes far as say it's a proverb. It's like a, it's a very, it's a professional verb. Like it's getting paid to verb. Verb heard of pronouns. That's what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> I had an English teacher who played Schoolhouse Rock like three times a week. So now I'm almost 40 and I still remember those songs, but I, I don't remember my son's birthday. I have a hot take about Modern Horizons 3. I'm going to point to left bleachers, Babe Ruth style. Aspiring Spike put the card Harrogast Erupting Nolkite into F tier for Modern. I'm going to put this card officially in my S tier, for the record. Uh, Harrogast Erupting... Okay. And I'll explain I... why. No, I'd love to hear this. If you have Delirium and you cast Harrogast Emerging Nolkite, you trigger your Sanctum of Ugin. What's Delirium? Certain, is that the four things in your graveyard? Four types in your yard, yeah. Four or more types for this, I guess, works. But at least four types in your yard. You cast Harrogast, emerge it for two mana by sacking a six drop, or four mana by sacking a four drop, who cares? You trigger your Sanctum of Ugin. Before Harrogast comes into play, Harrogast is still on the stack. Sorry, first you discard your hand, draw three, then you trigger Sanctum of Ugin. Search your deck for Emrakul the Promised End. 
Harrogast comes into play. You hold priority. Sacrifice Harrogast to cast Emrakul the Promised End because it costs four less and its emerge cost is equal to its mana cost. Immediately get an Emrakul trigger. Even if they counterspell your Emrakul, you still get to take their next turn. You can do that on like turn four. In modern. In modern. That's hilarious. I believe that's how that works in the rules. If I'm wrong, crucify me. If I'm if I'm wrong, instead you search up Ulamog, the, the ceaseless hunger, and pay one mana to exile two of their things. Okay. S tier. Harragast. Emrakul the Promised End. Sanctum of Ugin maybe is a hot little secret pick from that. I don't actually know. I don't know if it's in the Commander Precon. It probably is. Sanctum of Ugin, Ugin I don't think is... That one's not spoiled yet, the, the Eldrazi precon. As at the time of recording, we don't have all the precons spoiled. Is Bloodbraid Challenger playable? Yeah, that card's sick. I think that card's legacy playable. Escape is a really That's strong mechanic. Yeah. Am I dumb for thinking the the escape Tarmogoyf is awful? It, yeah, sorry. I'm dumb? I think you're dumb. For that, for that take, yeah. Why? So I've been playing Proxy MH3 Modern with some of my friends. And that card just, like, is a one-mana 4-5 in, like, a Death Shadow deck. If it ever gets up to being bigger than that, like... My buddy who was playing the deck... You play Mishra's Bobble in that deck already, right? And, like, land, instant, sorcery, creature, artifact. Like, a one-mana 5-6 is really strong. Like, that's... That by itself is good enough. You get into games where, like, I kill a, a Nethergoyf and they just escape it, and it still is a 4-5, because they just had, like, extra land, you know? And we played a game where he played a Tarfire as his fifth lightning bolt. And in combat, two Nethergoyfs got through, he Tarfired me for plus six damage, because he put Ooh. instant tribal yeah. in the yard. Okay, okay so here's now. what we're going to do. Goyf as a spec, after we do an insane letter-writing campaign to say that, like... They need to do a functional reprint of Tower Fire with the, the doesn't have the word tribal on it. And so they'll do, you know, it'll be a kindred and then your goif will be a 7 8. I think another goif is just a Death Shadow card. And like Death Shadow is already pretty close in modern. Um, it's also one of the cool things about that deck is when you play Nether Goyf and Death Shadow, you have eight creatures in your deck that can be one mana things to enable Stubborn Denial. I, oh, I'm not opposed to being sold on the card. I just uh, have been living in a world where raw stats are not good enough, and I perceived the escape cost to be very high. I, I know that one mana looks like it's half of two mana, but in modern it's like way less than two mana. Right? Like way less. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Also, like escape is just like a broken mechanic. It's just like so powerful. It's it's kind of dumb. What do we think of Necro Dominance? Is that going to get played anywhere? I'm not smart enough to figure that one out, but I feel like it will. It's just maybe it's just like I can't afford <laughs> Necropotence and I packed this. I don't know. I think it's this it's currently the... not played relative. It's played less than some of the other cards that were spoiled the same amount of time, but like who knows what that means long term. I can't speak to Commander too much, although actually I think Commander it has a chance because there's so many things that you give your spells flash. But like on your instep, draw your 15 cards, cast Born Upon a Wind or something. All my spells have flash. I combo kill you on my own instep. That yeah. could be that could be something that you do in Legacy. Even I don't I don't think so, but like maybe. I was looking at flash things for sure with this. I mean, if they made this to be modern playable, I would be surprised if it was. Born like, you know, the, well, legal. If, if they're going to put in like a necropotence, like, I don't know. Well, I, I, so, I, I, think, I think it's probably on the, the fair side. I think they probably tested it a lot till it's like um, just fair enough that it's good in modern. One of the biggest draws of the Horizon sets ever since they came out has always been to reignite competitive players' love for the game based on decks that they used to play 15 or 20 years ago. And putting this and... Hence Phyrexian, power balance. And Phyrexian Tower into the set is a yeah. giant fireworks signal flare for people to share these in group chats with people who they used to play Magic with and get them back into Magic playing mono-black control or even buying packs to evoke yeah. the feeling of mono-black control 
like, th there's the two-mana version of Tendrils of Corruption. Like, all of the nostalgia fragments are there to try to get somebody to play Cabal Coffers in an FNM. What if you put this card in Death Shadow? End of turn, pay 10 life. My Death Shadows are 12 12s. I have <laughs> Stubborn Denial up. Your turn. Kill me or kill my Death Shadows or you fing die. That It'll might actually be kind of sick. Ritual at that point. I mean, like, it's like, a, like, an, like a late game thing because, like, no one's bringing in enchantment destruction against Death Shadow. Right. Sweet I think you have not. to be playing a blue version of Shadow to play this, but, like, maybe. I don't know. I, I mean, counter spells are they're they're good. People play them yeah. for a reason. I get it. I just I don't know. I, I like Death Shadow as a concept. It's very funny to me. It's such a cool card. I love it. Because I used to play that like Sarcomancy Carnophage deck back in the day, where you were like you were playing, you know, um, Ancient Tomb just as much for the life loss as you were for anything else. Jason, can you please, or not Jason, uh, JJ, can you please put sarcomancy and carnophage on the screen but please put them in latin so the people jason's age will understand what he's talking about so i have a a death shadow i might be the first person to have ever played death shadow in a modern gp which i know is a bold claim this is well before fatal push got printed even before Gurmag angler i was playing four copies of death shadow in my varls the scar striped deck as a one mana put 13 counters on something Okay. Yikes. <laughs> I did not do well at that GP. I believe I like one three dropped or something, but I may have been the first person. If someone is, if someone knows someone who played four copies of Death Shadow in their modern deck before Dragon's Maze came out, let me know. Put it so in that's the comments. Registered <laughs> and played at least a competitive match. Right. Like I played <laughs> f four or five rounds. I won one or two matches. On the topic of Modern Horizons three distribution, not power level, but the amount of product that will be out there. Uh, up until this point, Modern Horizons 2 has been one of the most opened magic sets of all time. Uh, a lot of us have picked Modern Horizons 2 cards as specs over the past few years. A lot of those haven't, haven't panned out because we underestimated the sheer volume of how much of this product was opened. Like, oh, this, this card's like only a dollar, it's MH2, like clearly a little bit. And then like, it just doesn't because there's so many other cards in the set and so much of this is being opened. I really don't want to but, touch a lot of the cards from the set just on the basis of getting burned in the past for stuff that seemed fairly obvious. So here, here's the thing. We have alleged information that Modern Horizons 3 collector boosters are a slightly higher print run than Fallout, which is not high. Yeah. Uh, and, mo and Modern Horizons 2 collector boosters did not have serialized cards and these have serialized Eldrazi and you can't make more serialized cards. That is a hard cap on the quantity of the product that is put out there. We talked about this on the episode where we had Jimmy. Uh, mm. but so you're you... saying that they would either need to do one discrete print run or do a later print run and disclose that there weren't serialized cards like, available? Do a Lord of the Rings holiday edition thing like they did that's, that's uh, the Lord of the Rings yeah, right? they yeah. definitely cannot do the latter of like hey we're doing another print run but with no serialized cards right. they can't do uh, that so there, it is worth considering why, why would you say they definitely can't do that and they can I just feel like it would go poorly that, oh yeah, sure there, there's no I don't think there's any way where legal or marketing just flags that green flags that but we have an we have another year at least of cynthia williams decisions locked in <laughs> like they're going to take effect because that stuff was already set in motion so i will say this about the rumor about the the, the print run uh, i won't obviously give numbers for a myriad of reasons but my store we got all of the collector boxes we asked for and we were not conservative with this set like we we are we're willing to buy a lot of this set Hmm. We are also a WP and premium store, so that might affect like our, our ranking and how much we get, but like sure. we did not get yeah. shorted. You're you're not who usually gets allocated hard though. Right. But I will say like we we, we got allocated on Fallout, and so I want to make yeah. that, you know, like Okay. <clears throat> the rumor could be true, it could not be, but that is just one piece of information in the in the pool of, of facts. Right. Um I, I brought it up because if it is true, then these are the exact opposite of MH2. Where, oh, there's infinite of these, there's infinite of these, uh, borderless solitudes are never going past 70. Like, this, if the collector booster supply on this is close to Fallout, 
then these will be very, very, very scarce. But that means the things that are collector box exclusive will be very expensive, like retro elementals. Right, and the serialized Eldrazi, which up until this point we've had the, this issue with serialized cards being overdone or having too high quantity or not reaching this real premium that a serialized card should. And I think that anybody who is remotely interested in having serialized cards as just as a thing in Magic knows and has been arguing, hey, these need to be exclusive in some way. These need to be right. special. They need to be few and far between. Um, hmm. Shocklands and Fetchlands don't feel like they are, but Eldrazi absolutely are, and we've seen it with the Praetors, where, like, th there's a way to do this correctly with Concept Praetors, and it's, like, exclusive art. You can get the cheap version, or you can get the really, really mm -hmm. cool one. And 250 is still higher than what I want from a serialized card. I would like to see them limited to 100. Uh, but, again, Lord of the Rings is the other example here, where Balance Tomb Serialized is a lot of money, because there's so, so few of them, and I don't think people understand how few of them there are, and we could see a similar issue with this uh with the, the fact that the three serialized cards are legendary eldrazi titans i think also is huge they put oh, it yeah. only on the good cards this time yes i was buying someone's collection a few weeks back and in their bulk rares as i was going through them for them i was like oh this is a serialized void slime <laughs> like this is a this is a very expensive card it wasn't like the bulk but it was like the you know like the the foil rares or whatever and i was just like sure didn't even notice. Just like open in a collector box and threw it in a box. Yep. And like, I know there are some bigger vendors who said like that happens not regularly, but it's happened multiple times. I've had it. I've, no, yeah. I've seen the Brothers War ones just in with the chaff before. Yep. No one fucking cares about a serialized void slime. I mean, I'm sure someone does. But like, if you open an Emrakul serialized card, you're already pogging because it's an Emrakul. You're like, whoa, cool, Eldrazi. Oh, also, it's number 47. Uh, is there good? is there is a lot it's of a math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is a lot of math as there have been with these collecting insert set here articles with oh, they have to be very public with the percentage chances you can get extended arts, the chance you can get a foil etched card, uh textured foils at one or two percent, that kind of thing. Uh I and again we ha had this whole thing on with Jimmy, but like I am not the person to do that math and crack forty boxes and do that. Mine, my business model and CASs are very far from that, but if you are somebody who does not have access to just collections coming into you because you are that person in the industry, uh, MH3 I think is worth looking at as one of those sets to buy, and I would go back and listen to the episode that we had uh, Jimmy from Vegas Singles on to sort of recap yourself on that. That is a good episode to go back and rewatch. I think it was very packed of like, very, very packed with good information. You know what else is packed with good information? My breaking bulk. Breaking bulk time. Breaking bulk time. Break, break, break. Oh, yeah, breaking bulk. There's so much good stuff. It's a pick. Breaking bulk. The end. I have two of them. Two? Two breaking bulks. Two of them. My first one is a Onslaught Green Common. I picked one from Jason's era. His is it like the his, is it like the four mana thing that gets plus one plus one for each elf you control? Or is that zero? One, that's no. That's, okay, no. He, you were close. Uh, Heedless one is the card you're thinking of. It is not that, and it is not Drove of Elves. Okay. Onslaught green uncommon. Common black black common. symbol common. Is it a beast? It does not deal with beasts either. It is not a beast esque card. Sylvan Messenger? The Goblin yeah. Ringleader equivalent? Okay. Yeah. I guess the card was in Origins too, huh? Shoot. This has zero reprints, which is very surprising to me. It's still. Is close. it a creature? No. It's still it's, it's close ish to bulk. It's not an instant. Oh, sorry, it's an enchantment, maybe? It is an enchantment. We're just guessing the card, all the I, card types. No, I can envision, like, Spider. kind of envision the card in my head. Like, the artwork has got, like, a funny looking guy on it. Not really. Okay, I might be thinking of a different card then. So the, the guy on the artwork is definitely not the focus of the the painting. I'm I'm, I'm pulling up on slide because I, I I'm not gonna get this one. Is but this like, something I need with to know... uh, with with cycling? 
Nope, this is uh, related to kindred uh, creature types. So it's an elf thing? It's an elf thing. From Onslaught. Hmm? A green common enchantment from Onslaught related to elves? Yep. Like... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's, um, yeah, no, I, I, the guy's funny looking. He's kind of wearing a funny outfit. It's Elvish Guidance. If that's your definition of funny looking, sure. But yes, he looks Elvish, like a hobbit guy. Elvish guidance is a green common enchantment from Onslaught. That's TCG market price is forty six cents. Uh, I have always been surprised. Oh my that this god, is not, I have this in a deck. That's embarrassing. I have always been surprised this is not worth more by itself. Uh, just making anything into a priest of titania is feels very good uh it's it's enchant lands not creature when i first cast this card i thought it was enchant creature it is not um so it's a little safer to put this on something and then untap it with wire uh with like not wire with somebody else, but like other elf shenanigans uh deserted temple and things uh it's a little safer than priest of titania in terms of things you get killed uh, the foil version is closer to $10, but this is just a, a common that still gets left in bulk because it's not at that $5 threshold. I mean, there's so many cards from Onslaught that have spiked to 7 or $8, and then they get pulled. This one, if you have Onslaught bulk, I know that's a big ask, but it'll be in there, and you should pull them. I don't think it's spiking soon, because if it would, it, if it was going to, it would have already, but um, it's just a, a nice little role player. You, you list it for $1.50, and it'll eventually sell. My breaking bulk this week is a Lost Caverns of Ixalan, colorless rare. I am not going to get it. <laughs> Lost... <clears throat> is it in its bulk? Is it a cave? Is it? It's a card that you pick out of bulk. It is a cave. Of course I was going to say, is the name of it Sunken City? Is that the name of the card, Sunken City? Yeah, it's not a hard one to get. It's Sunken Citadel. Citadel. This card's like 2 or $3, and I keep finding them in bulk. Uh, it is a land that comes into play tapped. You choose a color. You can tap it for uh, uh, one mana of that color or two mana of that color to only to activate abilities of lands. There's a card that Aspiring Spike loves to, to mention. There's lots of cool utility lands in Modern Horizons 3, like Shifting Woodland. And this card goes great with that. Do you recommend uh, like engaging with the Aspiring Spike's content just to see what people are saying? Or would you find someone who summarizes... It is crucial to engage with Aspiring Spike's content because as I respect Spike a lot as a player and a deck builder and as an entertainer, but I think a lot of... It doesn't matter if a card is actually good. It matters if people think it's good. So even when I disagree with him about things, I think his opinion yeah. still carries a lot of weight as a financial incentive because when Spike says a card is good, people who rely on him for that information and can't necessarily draw their own conclusions as strongly as, as I can will follow that because that's that's what he's there for. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen this going back 10 years. Uh, 10 years ago, it was Saito Wayfinder, this yep. Japanese website that would just, as soon as previews for Pharos or Cons or whatever set was coming out at the time, you would just get these pictures of deck, deck lists on Twitter, and they, they were not optimized, they were not streamlined, but they were concepts of just 60-card decks somebody could buy cards from on TCG or Star City and then bring them to FNM the first weekend because they thought, oh, that looks fun. And... One other person kind of like that. I don't know how much reach he has, but uh, Yo Man Five on Twitter. Every standard set posts like sixty standard deck lists. Yep. And they're just like all good starting points. And, like that kind of stuff does have influence in, like, Jerry T retweets one of those deck lists, and all of a sudden people are tuned into a card that they wouldn't have otherwise. Like I think Delny was a card that happened. Like that kind of popped off that way for standard players briefly, despite not really materializing for Murders of Karloff Manor. First to market. All right, Jason, what do you got? I have a blue uncommon from Dominaria with zero reprints. The the, the 2018 oh. Dominaria, correct? Like the yeah, Dominaria. Just... Uh, is it the one mana aura that gives a creature like curiosity type stuff? No, or is that no, Dominaria no. remastered? Arcane United Flight. Things? No, you're right. Arcane Flight is in that. Yeah. Um, I heard it's a common though, isn't it? I think so. It's like a, got like a cat on it jumping out a window. Sorry, a funny little guy. That one's funny, actually cat. Funny little guy. Uh, do, blue uncommon from original Dominaria. Wizard's Retort? Hmm. Good cast. No, that's worth less than this. 
I wasn't sure. Uh, no reaper. Unwind is a common, right? You haven't named a single creature yet, which makes me think you think it's not a creature, but it is. Oh. Is it like a, a serpent? The art depicts a funny little guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating for that one. Uh, blue? Unco I, I know the set symbol, and I'm trying to manifest it and spin a cube in my mind at the same time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh... My cube's bigger, but yeah, sure. Um, I my I cube nothing. is better because I know the name of this card, and you guys don't. Yeah, I got I, nothing, man. My cube yields to your cube. Merfolk trickster. Oh yeah, that's over a buck. Pull these out of your bulk. I should have got that. I'm a fool. We should, we're both fools. Merfolk I, I forgot that trickster. card was from Dominaria entirely. It feels like it's from like a core set, which I guess Dominaria kind of had core kinda, set vibes. It kind of does. Like, why would you just jam a weird merfolk in there? But yeah. It uh, it has it's a good utility, Merfolk. It has flash and it does a thing. That's pretty. Can cool we just for... be? Can we just thank our blessings that Corbin is not here for the episode where we didn't get some Merfolk? God, thank God. I mean, I count my blessings that he's just not here in general. Well, God rest his soul. Poor Corbin. We, we, we miss Corbin on this cast. He's dead now, but we miss him. Another car crash. <laughs> Another one. Yeah. He's uh, just. He's there's just... too much glass in his face. What else? What else we got going on today on Magic? Anything else happening in Magic besides Corbin being dead and Modern Horizons three? I've got a, I've got a breaking bulk that is not from him, but I can pretend it's from him. TCG is player is bulk. TCG player sending out TCG player envelopes. We, we'll, yeah, talk uh, envelopes. we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, hi guys, I'm Corbin. I have a Commander twenty fourteen. Oops, no, it's twenty sixteen. Oops, no, I don't know Magic cards. It's twenty. 15. It's it's a green card from Commander 2015, the year that I mistakenly had a kid or something. I don't know. I don't know how old mine is, but it that's what my card is. I'm Hostler Corbin. Commander 80. 2015? Yeah. That was the mono coloreds? No, that was the enemy coloreds. Oh, it was the experience counters. It's a green uncommon green rare. Green rare. rare. Bane of progress. Good guess, but no. Azuri's Predation. Yes, Corbin's picks are very easily guessable. I would uh, never have gotten that. This card spiked very hard for a very short amount of time, and then it tanked, and then it got a reprint, and it has slowly crept above bulk and stayed in the $1 range or so. Uh, it it's just... played a load. It's played way more than anybody thinks. Yeah, it, it's very, very good at breaking board stalls and just having those games, it's kind of like or just a really bad insurrection that green doesn't need, but it still gets played. And I can't explain why. I mean, well, you, if you pay 8 mana for this spell, you are going to go from a losing board state to a winning board state. Yeah, but then somebody's going to drop another Wrath and then the game goes on for another 2 hours. Or you just crater hoof everybody. That is, that is the correct play, yes. But Azuri's Predation uh, has been worth money at various points, and it got reprinted in Commander Masters. It has a borderless version, but even the regular version is money. It's played more in EDH than Arachnogenesis, Grasp of Fate, and Bastion Protector. That's crazy. Mm hmm. It's played almost as much as Blade of Selves. That's wild. Mm hmm. I've uh, never seen this cast, I've never was... even seen the art of the reprint. I got I got a fun little little anecdote for y'all here before we move on. All right. I was hanging out at my local game store yesterday, and uh, one of the local judges came in and was just chatting me up and talked about a new commander deck he had. And normally I'm not one to listen to about new commander decks, but when a judge who's kind of a weird combo pervert starts talking to me, I listen. He had a the, the combo starts with Rata Drabic in play. If you don't know about a Drabic, uh, that's the one a creature you control dies. Legendary creature you control dies. Black, you pay white. Two. Yeah, yeah. You make a token copy of the creature that is not legendary. Um, and then O'Hare Talk, the triple your tokens guy. And I don't remember, there was some other card involved maybe, but I remember that the eventual situation ended up being you end up with a number, like just off of one O'Hare Talk token entering, you end up with more tokens than there are atoms in the universe by like a lot. 
And the number is calculable, but it is also unfathomable. And so the judges were talking about like, well, you can't just say there's infinite because it's not infinite. It's, 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 it's a calculable number. Can we just make a distinction between incalculably large and incalculably large? And it's like, well, does it matter past a certain point? And it's like, well, if someone wants to go infinite, they have to declare a number larger than that. Does that does your opponent know a number larger than like three to the five to the eighty fifth? Can you, you just said, say a Googleplex? Cass, when you said pervert, I yeah. didn't trust you, and that was on me. I combo mm-hmm. pervert. I didn't yep. I was unaware of your game. <laughs> yeah. Um, big shout out to this judge. I won't name. I won't name and shame. But it was this a very entertaining combo interaction. Sexual. Which we we did have to look up how many atoms were in the universe because we weren't sure. And Google AI told me there was one thousand and fifty four or one thousand and eighty four atoms in the universe, which uh, se- <laughs> seems low. But it's actually ten to the eighty four. So how uh, come Google hasn't created a, a chain of movie theaters called the Googleplex? <laughs> They only show AI movies. <laughs> no, they only show the movie AI with Haley Joel Osment. God. <laughs> they only show an AI version of that movie. Like you, you Did made you know that was, a thousand that times. That was Stanley movie. Kubrick trying to make a Pinocchio movie, and then he died, and Spielberg's Shelly. like, ugh, I guess I'll finish this movie. Ugh. Terrible. Y'all want to pick some weeks? I have, I'm really excited about my pick of the week. Uh, I'm going to talk for, like, less than 60 seconds. Go off, T- King. So, TCG Player made an announcement recently, uh, sending out a message to sellers that they were going to start offering branded email or branded mailing letter things for, to, for sale for sellers to buy. I don't think that most sellers should use them, and I also think that this is just one more drop in the bucket towards TCG Player removing direct and moving away from the labor film industry. Uh, I don't think that it actually means anything in terms of changing your business model if you are a TCG Player seller. Like, how did I In time. Yeah, great. Anyway, so Wick, Wick of the Peak. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Time for the peak of the week. Wake of the peak. Is that like terror of the peak? <laughs> I'm excited about mine, so I'll lead us off. My pick of the week this week is Ranger Captain of Eos. Notably a kind of expensive card. Um, but his card is from Modern Horizons 1, which uh, happened five years ago. And also, it's not getting a reprint in Modern Horizons 3. It did get one in Modern Horizons 2. This card is a CEDH staple, but in my musings about Birthing Ritual, I realized this card's really good to hit off Birthing Ritual because it finds you a one-cost creature to maybe be part of, like, a Malira combo. And it also provides you protection against spell-based decks. Kind of an incredible one to just sort of cheat and to play off of, I don't know, sack my wall of roots. Um, This card... Has potential to be more expensive because it has been more expensive in the past. Uh, if it sees any amount of play in modern as a multiple copy card in a deck, like I could see this card hitting forty dollars pretty easily. Hey, Chihuahua. Cool. That's sick. Mine's not going to hit forty dollars ever. <laughs> and what's yours, Jason? Flowering of the white tree from Lord of the Rings. The this is, is a two. Uh, it's like four bucks on TCG Player. If you get these under five anywhere, um, they're Star City's got them under five. Like Flower of the White Tree is a ten dollar card in two years, unless they reprint it, which you know normally would be like, yeah, they'll reprint it, but it's a legendary enchantment, it's so also, that's a little tougher. It's also literally specific to Lord of the Rings, right? Right. Yeah, and it's a little tough to make a better version of this soon without it being ridiculous. Flowering of the White Tree gives your legendary creatures plus two, one, and ward one for two mana. That's a really hard to beat card if they're going to make like another anthem going forward. People still play the anthems in EDH because they have them. Flowering of the White Tree is, you know, probably the best anthem that currently exists. Oh, that isn't in another color. That uh, War Leader's Calling is ridiculous. But Flowering of the White Tree, I think, is probably the best. Um, under five dollar 
uh, anthem currently. This, this card sick. It also kind of has that mojo of referencing legendary creatures, and a hundred legendary creatures get printed every three weeks. So like, mm. card has a lot of room to grow. Yep. But it's it's no wor- It's still better than a glorious anthem for your non legendary right. creatures, which is crazy. I have a pick of the week, and it is a card originally printed in 2009. It is Lotus Cobra from Zendikar, and it was reprinted in Iconic Masters and then Zendikar Rising. But I think a lot of people still think of this card as this close to bulk rare uh, power crept. I mean, there was Tireless Provisioner, I think the card's name is, that is just kind of a better version for one more mana. Uh, I have been most... I've been cutting this lately. Other people have been uncutting it and buying it. Uh, it has been creeping up from two dollars. It's now three fifty market price. Uh, direct low is around four fifty or five, and there's there's a reasonable brick of copies there. But I I think this is just a card that continues to dwindle in supply due to casual demand. I think the word Lotus has a lot to do with it for SEO purposes. Yeah of just Landfall, Lotus, something, something, original Zendikar, and I think the wheels are in place for this to slowly creep up without people knowing, and I would be happy to own a lot of these if I could get them under three, and then just just wait. I think you can get 450 for them after fees. Reasonably. There's one lunatic paying $10 on three of these at Card Sphere right now. That's pretty good. I think the Grand Prix promo might be the best one or the Zendikar foil, but like there's no version of Lotus Cobra that's over $20. OG foil Lotus Cobra is one of the prettiest magic cards ever printed. It's got chippy art and Zendikar foiling is really well done. Yes. Yeah. I kind of like the, um, the showcase foil just because the, the rainbow colors, but the, uh, unfortunately the the Grand Prix one's Therese Nielsen. So nobody wants that. I, w- I will say, there was a thread going around on Twitter that's like, what's your favorite non-legendary mythic? And my answer is either Vengevine or Lotus Cobra. Like, just, Lotus Cobra is such an incredibly cool, nostalgic card. I remember playing the 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 Rug control deck, not Teamer Rug. Teamer didn't exist yet. Mm-hmm. Where it was like Lotus Cobra, Oracle of Moldiah, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Precursor Golem, Inferno Titan. And yep. you just like oh, went nuts. It was so fun. That deck was fun. My Lotus Cobra tech like, back, a, back in the day is if you... If you had an untapped Knight of the Reliquary and somebody tried to mana leak from tapped out, you could generate three mana with Lotus Cobra and Knight of the Reliquary. It was dirty. I remember playing an FNM where my opponent went turn one Hierarch, turn two Knight of the Reliquary, turn three, play Lotus Cobra, play Crack Fetch Land, Knight of the Reliquary, activate, like play Sovereigns of Lost Alara, I think. I think that's that, that matter. It might have just been Gideon Jura, but it was like... I was I was playing a red-green-white deck that had three Sovereigns and one um, Eldrazi Conscription just because you would just, like... It was so easy to make blue mana with Lotus Cobra. No. That deck was so much fun. You just... You you were the Vengevine um, Fauna Shaman Bloodbraid Elf deck, but also you had a couple of Sovereigns. I do also remember there was a sweet deck that played... It played Lotus Cobra, incidentally... Because I played a bunch of Fetchlands, but it was like Hedron Crabbing itself. Like it <laughs> Renegade Doppelganger and yep. Phantasmal Image. So yep. you had Vengevine come into play. So if you cast Renegade Doppelganger as your first creature, you cast Image as your second creature, Vengevine would come into play. Yep. Renegade Doppelganger would become a copy of it, and then Image would come into play, become a copy of Vengevine, and you hit them for 12. <laughs> that also played Eldrazi Monument to ramp into with Cobra to give all your Vengevines flying, plus one, plus one, and indestructible. Yep. God, that used to be so cool. It did, yeah. It still is, but it also used to be too. We it used, used to, to live in a society. It still is, but it used to too. Yeah, magic. Now, uh, quick word from our sponsors. I like magic again. I made a bunch of. Yeah. I made more than one five color Omnath deck, so I'm back, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. I think I, I I was considering selling all of my decks and only having Omnath decks. I think that would be really funny. It'd be a good bit, but I also think you shouldn't do it. But yeah. like, oh, but you could have you could have any kind of deck as an Omnath deck. You could have Enchantress. You could have like clones. You could have you know, non landfall type lands matters junk. You could just be like an X spells deck. You could do whatever you wanted. Any kind of typo it doesn't matter. There is there is an Omnath mage. for you. Your j- jelly bean mage, I think, is a great Twitter handle. I don't know. It sounds a little bit like Ronald Reagan. 
He's jelly bean yeah. necromancer. Or jelly bean ghoul, maybe. Jelly <laughs> jelly bean lich. <laughs> I'm dead, but my economics aren't. I was brought back with the same voodoo as my economic policy. There was an Ask Reddit thread for uh, what is the worst hypothetical thing the U.S. president could do tomorrow, and the top comment was like, "Was like Reagan and Kissinger did this already in Vietnam?" Or in like, <laughs> yeah, Jesus, <laughs> like, like th- there's no hypothetical here. Like this happened. Like they sabotaged peace talks. Like. <laughs> mtgstocks.com it's a place where you can look up prices of cards use tools it's where we get all of our data the cubes that rotate in my head are all a result of mtgstocks.com mtg stocks and, not and that's a o-c-k-s not like s-t-a-l-k-s we're not talking about celery or following somebody until they um feel like you're everywhere they go and they can't escape you but Neither we are talking things. about beans because up the bean stock is a card you can find on there on MTG, that is a stock that is on MTG stocks. Good call. I have been working with the developer at MTG stocks to create a new feature called the direct low differential. It is a tool that is still in beta, so you can use it, but it might be a little wonky. We're working on it, but you can use it to find cards that like a lot of our pick of the weeks have a big difference between TCG low and the direct low. So if you are an aspiring direct seller or a current direct seller, this is a tool you can use to adjust some filters and find, oh, this card's TCG low is 40 cents, but it's direct low is $2. I have a lot of those in bulk. So mm. it is a helpful tool. Or can- I will not buy them for $2 by clicking card optimizer. Right, yeah, you can also just use this tool while buying your own commander decks to make sure that you're not paying an absurd direct premium on certain cards. Don't get like, you don't. If you're buying Ranger Captain of Eos, you don't want to pay 45 right now. You want to pay 25 and then sell them for 45 later. Uh, again, this you is You want to s- steal booster packs, and rip them open and keep it, and then sell the rest to somebody else. This is a feature that is only available to MTG Stocks Premium users, and you can get a 10% discount on your MTG Stocks Premium membership with the help of our affiliate code that you will find in the description. We also have an affiliate code for Coalesce Apparel and Design, the best shirts in the Magic community. I am not wearing one right now. I was hoping I would, because that would have been great, and I didn't plan that. But I wear mine two or three times a week, I'd say. I'd say I wear a Coalesce a couple times a week. I got my Coalesce Apparel Jim Davis hockey jersey. Ren and number six. We are working on a, another shirt. I've said that for a while now, but I yeah, also I don't said believe, early, I, I, even I, I don't believe you I said that page. a few months ago, and I also said it would be coming out this summer. So that part is still true. It's summer now. Hot t-shirt it's, summer. It certainly feels like it. I am dying in here. My rope is not even running. Once we get the new shirt made at the next like magic on the all at, we should do a wet t-shirt contest, but I'm the one with the hose spray you guys down. That's not fair. It's funnier. I guess. That is funnier. I'll do it. I knew DJ would do it. I knew, I knew DJ would be in. Yeah, his weight doubles if you get his clothes wet. We can get Corbin's Murpho costume in there again. Remember that from right before COVID where Corbin had to wear a Murpho costume that he copped out and didn't wear the trunks? If you spray all my clothes and make me heavy, I will go to Heart Attack Grill just to pay less. <laughs> It's a plan then. Next Vegas. I won't be in Sir, Vegas. I don't think Fuck you're 312 this. pounds. No, I am. Is that the number? I don't know what it is. It's a lot. Okay. It's a lot. Okay, we're it's... questioning this guy's facts. We're questioning this guy's facts with hammers. I don't know if it's like 312 or too much. You gotta weigh too much. Mm. You gotta weigh way too much. To Thank you, discount. everybody. For tuning in to this very special episode of Brainstorm Brewery. I have been your host, Cass. Uh, Jason and DJ are also very thankful for your presence. Anything you have to say, Jason? I'm not thankful for your presence. Oh, Jason hates you, actually. I could... No, I do not hate any of our listeners. I could take or leave them. It is 350 pounds, by the way, or 160 kilos for our European listeners. Hmm. Interesting. And for our European listeners, yes, a person can be 160 kilos. That is possible. That's a thing. Well, yeah, you gotta, you gotta get up that. early in the morning. <laughs> you can't just, like, become 350 pounds. You gotta Europeans get up early know. and not jog. You gotta eat breakfast. You gotta eat second breakfast. You gotta eat 11 You gotta eat 
melted Ben and Jerry's ice cream with olive oil poured into the carton and stirred up. That's how Jared Leto gained weight for a role. And I'm like, they probably have a fat suit. He could wear. I think Later, he was folks. playing. I think he was playing Mark David Chapman. That's why he gained weight. <coughs> That'd be Mark David Chapman. I am stopping my recording. <laughs>